This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. All right, we're here with Jacob Lowry from Turquoise United. Brother, I'm so excited for the show. It's, it's a great event. Uh, second year? Second year. And um, how many vendors roughly? We got 15 this year. Specializing in turquoise. Not kind of, a little bit of turquoise and a bunch of bumblebee jasper, turquoise. If they bring anything other than turquoise, we tell them pack it up and put it back in their car. Oh yeah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> um, so there are a few contests. Mm -hmm. There's presentations, seminars, you have the gala. Um, that looks awesome. Didn't get in time to find, but next year. There you go. Um, can you tell us what made you want to start Turquoise United? You work for the Turquoise Museum. So the museum, is, this is our 30th anniversary for the museum. And as we have developed the museum, one of the things that we notice is there is not, there are a lot of different people out there that have a lot of different opinions but there is not a forum for everybody to get together and share and actually function as an industry. There's a bunch of different Facebook groups, there's various different people that post information online, but there isn't a place where there can have, there can have a round table discussion in that sense. And that's what we're trying to create. It's called Turquoise United, because we want to bring the entire turquoise industry together so that we're all functioning the same way. Fantastic. And um, you're doing more than just here selling turquoise. For instance, one of the presentations are turquoise about like turquoise law. Mm -hmm. And perhaps, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, it touches down on like misrepresenting turquoise. Here's the thing. We've seen it a thousand times. This lady selling hubei, she's calling it Cerios. It's not her fault. She sold it as Cerios, but somebody messed up along the way, either intentionally or unintentionally bringing that awareness much like misrepresenting native american jewelry it's a big deal in new mexico we've all seen it. everybody it's a big here deal all over the world yeah true and um i'm happy that people are putting their foot down and bringing this awareness that is open to the public but you have to register i believe yep. it's open to the public uh you do have to register for the symposium part of it uh, the, the law's presentation, we had a panel discussion with the FB, FTC and the Department of Interior and they discussed what the laws are and how they regulate them. Uh, in coming years, we'll, you know, that's not a conversation you have once and okay, we're done. <laughs> so here in another two, three, four years, we'll do it again, um, get into more detail about the laws. Uh, I'm teaching a turquoise basics class later on today. We're also doing a collecting 101 class, which is the first class in a four class course about how to collect turquoise. There's a lot of people who buy turquoise and there's very few people who collect turquoise. Learning how to collect can help you learn how to buy. Right. There are people out there that have um, a ton of cars. You know, they've got a bunch of beat up cars in their front yard, but that doesn't, that, that is different than somebody who has a collection of Lamborghinis. There are people who have a ton of turquoise, and that's different than somebody who has a very specific, meticulous collection of turquoise. And that's what the that's what that course is gonna teach, is how to develop your collecting style and how to specifically build a collection, not just amass a bunch of turquoise. Couple contests today. Mm -hmm. One is the high grade and one is the identification. Right. Two to four for both of those? Uh, so the two to four is the identification. It's open. It's an open window, open house. If it takes you five minutes to go through and do it, cool. If it takes you two hours, cool. It's uh, You can go through at your own pace. And then uh, the high grade contest, entries are being done now. Um, and then the judging is at 1.30. Oh, I'm so excited. So the high grade contest is today. Here at the show, Virgil's entering this beautiful 100% natural piece of King's Manasseh. We're gonna wish him luck. What are you gonna do with all that prize money, baby? 
Maybe make it into jewelry. <laughs> Albuquerque. Yes, sir. Heck yeah. Do you folks ever sell any rough? Nope, I cut everything. I hear that. I don't <laughs> sell rough either. These were all cut back in the 70s, I think, because it's got the... Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got the old backing mm -hmm. at DEF CON that we, nobody uses anymore. Very For cool. past, I don't know how many years. I didn't even know DEF CON was that old. I thought people were just mixing up grouts and <laughs> dyes and stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? Yep. I've seen some goof... I'm sure we all have seen some silly backings. Yep. You ever see people use records? Yes. That's kind of silly. <laughs> it's cute. Now they cut up the records and glue them. <laughs> cut up grandma's Buster Beagle's bagpipe buskin bands. <laughs> Vinyl. Do you folks have a storefront? Nope. Nope, I do. Uh, I go on the road once in a while, and then we do this show and the Tucson Gem Show. Where in Tucson? I'm at the Hollow. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. With the big boys. Yep. <laughs> It makes sense. You have an amazing product Thank and you high, super high quality. Thank you. And uh, like I was saying before, we're at Silver Fox. If you look at every single piece, perfect girdles. Why? Because these are intended for jewelry. Yep. 100%. It must be Ty. Yes, I Thanks, Ty. <laughs> you bet, man. All right, I'm breaking from finishing this video to show you these pieces that I got from Gibson Lapidary LLC. These are two beautiful pieces of Marenzi. I paid $5 a carat, $130 for both. Um, absolutely stunning. I was going to buy one of every piece of the different variations of Marenzi he had to make a video on Marenzi Turquoise and Marenzi 2, which is the Nakazari that goes by the name Marenzi 2. There's a lot of people out there buying this Nakazari material that you've probably seen me cut in the past as a lot of pyrite, thinking that it's this real Marenzi. And um, so 130 bucks, I couldn't afford to buy one of every variation, but this material is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'll sell them both for 130 plus shipping if anyone's interested, or I'll put them in some nice jewelry. But I wanted to show what I got from uh, Ty. He's got really great stuff. Make sure to check him out at the Holodome in Tucson. Or uh, hit him up when you're in Albuquerque. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am.
Okay. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Yeah. Um, are these carved in Bali? Yes. They're so nicely done. It'd be hard to find someone around here that could do something that good. I don't know if anyone would. We had these done last year. They're so such master craftsmen. Oh, excuse me. We took them to Tucson this year. And we, I think we sold them. Where in Tucson are you? We're at the um, Pueblo. The, the River Park section of yes. Pueblo? Oh, I've seen you folks before. We're in the ballroom, uh, the main ballroom, right off the lobby. Booth number one. You can't miss Booth number one, yeah. right off the lobby at the Pueblo show. And you'll be there this year? Um, it's going to be a good one. I think so. I feel it ramping back up. We didn't. Well, we ramped up pretty good last year. Or this year. Oh, this one Really great craftsman. Um, if you don't mind me asking, when you mail material away, do you just leave it up to the artists over there in Bali? Do you give them a slight suggestion or do you yes, send them a whole does. picture? He oh, wow. pictures or renderings and, and then they do so they probably see the material and then say, hey, we could do this to that? That's cool. We did some that were done, and I didn't bring them because I think we need to go leave them. Because they're so dark. There's so much nature. You can hardly see the difference. But they're like fears, faces, exquisite faces. You can't really recognize it because the matrix is so busy and dark. Is this eagle the Kush Verisite from Iran? It might be. Kind of looks like it, which is pretty awesome. Relatively new to the scene. Well, we he did an eagle. That's all we know. <laughs> what did you say? Is it the Kush Verisite from Iran? Sometimes they call it Black Ridge or Emerald Rose. Uh, this this like gentleman it. has some rough. You can see it. Uh, the far right corner. Oh, okay. If you, uh, I think that's what it is, which is cool because it's. Oh, Shaw? Yes. Yeah. Yes, some of the Kush Yeah. It's it looks very similar. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> Relatively new. But I, think. I don't think it is because GL sent the rough. But he he might have sent it. I don't know. GL would know. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. This is really cool. I picked up a piece of this. This is Romanian, not Armenian. Romanian. This stabilized some pirate in it. I bought a nice nugget of it. We're going to cut it. And then use a small portion of it as an educational tool. Because a lot of people, when they think turquoise, you know, obviously Southwest America, Mexico, China. But you don't, you know, a lot of people, you know, aren't very familiar with like okay armenian romania or even persian there's a dedicated persian dealer here i would love to get an interview with him but okay okay thank you i don't know if i could these are stunning these are probably pretty old calibrated cabochons um they look like campitos from mexico have you ever have you ever got challenged to cut calibrated cabochons? I just say no. <laughs> I just tell him. It's sick. He can do it by eye. He's like he's a savant. Yes, I can't. I can't do that if you if you paid me. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like this one is similar to this one right here. Oh. All by hand. He's an idiot. Do you, you must be docking though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I use kebab sticks. And I dock. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to go talk to those girls. They can show you yeah. what they do. And oh, yeah. You take one or two classes and you... Arizona and turquoise? Right Is it Sipping yeah. Beauty or maybe Globe or something similar? Oh, Definitely natural. It just feels rock hard. 
Imagine cutting all of these ovals. But you know, you can use them as So incredibly impressive. These are incredible beads. Really, really nicely made. Um, even though these are from the same region, these are kind of everyday. These are very special. Chinese turquoise beads. All right, we are here with Adrian Garcia from Grants, New Mexico. All kinds of amazing rough. Our friend Randy said it definitely had to come bug him about the beautiful hube. Um, also, cuts stunning cabochons. But before we take a look at everything, I really wanted to talk to this gentleman about stabilizing. Um, him and his crew offer a stabilization service, which is really cool. Everyone's always bugging me, hey, how do I stabilize my own turquoise? Uh, we're going to ask Adrian a little bit how that goes on, and um, maybe you can contact him if you guys are interested in stabilizing your own material. Adrian, I think you might be the best dressed here. <laughs> they, they told me everyone's going to be in suit and ties, so I, like, ah, I don't want a suit. But... So, How long have you been in the industry? Um, about six years now. Oh, nice. And so, we've been stabilizing for six years. I purchased the company out a year ago. My partner was in the 70s, so he decided he wanted to get out of the industry. Was he like a mentor to you? He yeah. showed you the ropes? I knew nothing about turquoise when I got into it. I was just a rock calm that used to, when we were hunting and stuff, built my backpack and then just kind of took off one day. I've been doing it since I was 17. Awesome. Man, I was going to say six years, you must have been like 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to stabilizing, um, a lot of people might not know there's good stabilization and there's bad stabilization. Yes. Sta some stabilizations that were done in the 80s are rotting today. And like changing colors, fault crumbling, some of the wax stabilizations that happened out of China. And some of that material is almost useless. And um, good stabilization can be so good, it can be almost misleading to natural. I mean, I think, sure, that's what a stabilizer is striving for, right? Yes. It's so good that you can't even tell. Like uh, some Tyrone I saw, some people selling online. Um, it was stabilized, but they couldn't tell. It just, it's, it's tough. There's, um, there's the Zachary method. There's cactus juice. There's... <laughs> oh. The cactus juice and stuff like it's it's gonna work. I mean, but it's just not gonna give you a good penetration. If you're gonna mess with like real small, if you're gonna mess with something like this, yeah, you can. But to be truthful with you, we stabilize cheaper than they can. You're gonna then you can get the setup done for. We can stabilize because we do it in such quantity. Really? Yeah. I stabilize a thousand pounds a week. Oh my goodness. So Tyler, he's in my he's my main stabilizer. He's the one that does it. Like, What's up, huh? How many how many pounds are you gonna run in the past month? Yeah. Just truthful. Uh, about a thousand pounds a week, maybe a little more. Holy smokes. So like, when you get to that quantity, we're able to buy our chemicals and our ovens and run it to a point where we can actually afford to treat. So we're treating right now for about $20 a pound, and you can't treat for yourself. That is incredible. Right. You're gonna, you, you can't buy a gallon of cactus cheese. No, exactly. <laughs> it's, I, I, I always wonder when I'm, I'm on like the Facebook discussion groups and stuff, like how do I treat myself? And I don't know, it sounds weird. I just, we don't chase them. We don't. We got kind of spoiled when we were used to doing 100 pound batches and stuff, but this last year we got to where we're doing 10 pounds and 5 pound batches, and it's just kind of becoming a new industry for us. Um, 
more shipping now. So I imagine when it comes to stabilizing, there's a lot of trade secrets. And it has to be guarded because there's a, there's companies in China and India who would love to know what makes you so good at it. They probably come up and literally ask you all the time. Well, look, like what is this from Monchon, like we were talking about? They literally pay me, they ship it from China down here, yeah. stabilize it here, and then take it back to China and cut it. Because if not, they're going to have those wispy waves. You get some of that weird white marks. Mm -hmm. Look at your you're like, why the heck is it like, has, we call it blowout in the same where it's like white centers and blue outsides. Well, China's known for that because they're not, they don't take control of the chemicals. And we don't, we don't use Chinese made products. Like the Chinese chemicals, they're not to the standard of American chemicals because they're not quality tested. There's no health concerns or nothing like that. So everything we use for the most part is all food grade chemicals that are rated that we can use in food you can eat off. And they're not messing with food. So there's a lot of people who are watching at home who don't quite understand stabilized turquoise. Stabilized turquoise can be sold by the carrot, like good turquoise, even stabilized has value. Why would you stabilize turquoise? Well, you got a bunch of chalk sitting around your mine. Yeah. That's money that you're just throwing away. Yeah, so like, let's say, for example, I'll go and buy a thousand pounds of Mexican turquoise tomorrow. Out of that thousand pounds, if I get 10 to 15 pounds of natural, that's like, I'm ecstatic because it's not common. So then what do you do with other 990 pounds, you know what I mean? You have to stabilize. Like, everything here is stabilized. The only thing, I have like some natural number eight, so everything here is going to stabilize. That's stabilized to Rome, they're stabilized Persian. This is an important rock that we make. Which has a big place in the market. I'll definitely I'll bug you about that here in a moment. Uh, some of the stuff, especially the Mojaves, can sell as fast as people can cut it. Yeah. Look, look, this is our goal. There's dyes added to this, and nobody it's selling faster than I can sell natural turquoise. Mm -hmm. I can't. All my natural turquoise, I've had that natural turquoise tray for like a year, and every other tray here rotates in and out. Oh, wow. So, is this uh this is Persian as well or Nako? This is actually Nako. Yeah. This is Nako, sorry. So you get some of the like crazy heavy pyrites where it got kinda like I don't know if the camera picks it up that well. It's almost impossible, yeah. Yeah. Then you get some of the like, just better like, this. this stuff is amazing. Uh, being a stabilizer, you probably have the in with a bunch of awesome miners. <laughs> that's so cool. That's that's where I think the biggest benefit to stabilizing is, is you have to, the mine owners eventually are going to find there's multiple stabilizers in America. I mean, but it's like you said, all of the stabilizers, they're very niche. We're, we're kind of, they don't really want to do it for other people anymore because why would you when you could buy them off and sell it yourself? Absolutely. It's, it's probably a, a totally dying art. It's definitely an art form because there's good stabilization, there's bad stabilization. Um, did you, have you ever tried to stabilize Persian? Yes. Okay, because I see a lot of the stabilized Persian that's coming from Persia, I feel like maybe it's wax. It's, you know what I feel like it is? It's like an epoxy. Because we got some in, I bought a bunch of it, and I didn't realize they treated it. I sliced into it, you open it up, and it has big old white centers. Oh, wow. And I was livid. So I'm trying to, it's hard to fix someone else's treat. That's the hardest thing, so we work on trying to fix the treat, but I really prefer not to mess with it. Wait, so like people who stabilize and they fail, mail you stuff to try to stabilize again? Really? I figured you'd like fill the pores and... Well, sounds weird. If, if they don't fill them, I can still get in. Oh, you probably, do you have to cut it though? We, we sometimes we slice it open if it's really problematic, and if not, we use a pressure system that nobody... We go to pressures that most people want. Crazy. So we can get inside harder rocks. And you, a vacuum chamber is cool and all, but you're just going at negative atmospheric pressure. You mean you? Have, there comes a point where you have to literally have a pressure system. And it's a lot more complicated than soak treating and vacuum treating. Like you can with your box chamber. You know what I mean? Um, that's so impressive. <laughs> that is so cool. It's, it's like the guys are doing cactus treat, but they don't realize is those chemicals that are in there, they're not really made to be in water. They're not made to be getting cut on. They're made to stabilize wood. Yeah, exactly. It's like, the not, wood. So, have you ever noticed a little cactus treat, when they leave it in water, it has more problems than normal stabilized surface. Like, obviously, all turquoise is water-soluble. Like, it doesn't like water. But... 
a cactus tree, you're gonna have problems where it smells like the chemicals coming off while you're cutting it. You're gonna instantly know. Like this stuff, once you put this to a cutting wheel, you'll never smell it again. There's no, it's done. Like, so you'll see how it goes. Um, so did you stabilize all of this rough here? So the first thing I notice is on a lot of inferior stabilizations, you see the glue on the outside. And I don't see that on anything you have. And I won't lie to you. Every once in a while we'll have a mess up where there's a piece here and there. For, but for the most part, we work very hard to make sure that it's Yeah. It's so good that I can imagine that this stone loses its ethics after a couple hands and people are like, that's 100% natural. You don't see no glue. You don't smell no glue. When you go to natural, you're never going to get that color. Like, well, this is obviously, that sleeps beauty natural there. But you're never going to have that bright, you lick this, it's not going to change color. Where you get that natural look and you get it wet, you're going to see the color differentiation. You see what I mean? Bro, if you lick this, nothing's going to happen. Because it's, it's already gonna, penetrated. Yeah, it's already done. So you can tell the natural, in the rough, very simply. When it gets to a cut stone, I have no idea. I'm not going to be able to say, like, that's natural, that's stabilized. Once it's cut, it's kind of, I, I can't tell the difference. In the rough, though, it's very easy to pick out. Did you do this hubei here? Yeah. He did a really great job. Some of this stuff you'll just see will just be your this guab on the side, especially with uh, Mexican turquoise. And a lot of it's you know Mexican turquoise is just generally affordable. Um, I buy from the Rubacaba family, and I love their stuff. It's affordable to where I'm never upset when the guava glues there. I zip it away and then I cut it. But um, it's just it's nice to know that it doesn't have to be that way always. And you were mentioning a mistake that that does happen and I was talking to Jeff Best over there who used to stabilize yeah. he said in the past you could ruin whole batches oh, yeah. and gel just, I'm just beg your pardon it's because of the gel treating so you just have like a whole jar set up and just completely it just we call it use like <laughs> resin blocks you know what I mean? <laughs> look at this um, so when it comes to composite blocks is that a whole nother process it, it must take pressure right Yes, so we have giant hydraulic cylinders. So I think that our cylinder is pushing like a quarter of a million pounds to half a million pounds on an 8-inch cylinder. So you're talking like 2,000, 3,000 PSI in a block. I didn't bring no block with us. A good educational tool, just so people can see where it comes so from. After it's cut up, it's going to look like this is Campitos, right? It's Campitos turquoise that we added some pyrites and stuff and put it back into the block. Wait, did you make the block? Yes. Oh, cool. You know, I, I know you're stabilizing, but I didn't think you were making blocks. We're, we're kind of slowed down on it just because it's we're moved in the middle of moving shop locations. Mm -hmm. But yes, we still we manufacture blocks. What I tell people all the time about the, the cool Mexican blocks, so like the Kingman Company, they do the Mojaves, I believe. Are they? Yeah. I'm, um, the green, yeah. <laughs> the greens and the purples. And at best, dyed stabilized turquoise. Um, there's even people making fake Mojaves now where it could be, it's probably baking soda pumped full of stuff. But with the Campitos blocks, they're, they're taking the kitty litter and making blocks out of it. Like the, the, the um, well, the, no, the, uh, not real kitty litter, the, the little chips at the end of the bucket. Oh, yeah. So like this. I use bigger chunks because I don't like the way it looks with the small turquoise. I mean, we have, you kind of have to get to a bigger nugget to make it look a lot better. They call it rice though. The, rice. the turquoise rice is like Better name than kitty litter, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> kitty litter is kind of gross. Um, if you don't mind me asking, do you sell your blocks to the public? Yes, I do. I just right now I'm at a point where all the, I don't have a lot of block right now. Mm -hmm. but normally I do sell block to the public. Uh, do you, if you don't mind me asking, do you roughly know what you sell your block? All depends on the turquoise I use. Oh, cool. so like this can those block would be right about a hundred dollars a pound. That's awesome. And then you look at this, and this is that's a mine that was a pocket mine out of Mexico. That's actually block. I know you can't. I would have thought that was Moha. I thought that was Baja. Yeah, like this <laughs> one it looks like it, but it's like that's actually block turquoise. This kind of stuff we'll do in like the seventy-five dollar pound range, just because I can buy the rough cheap. Yeah, I mean, but the Campitos has such a high market value that I can't put it into a block. I could sell it, not block for a good enough price that it's hard to sell it. Put all the labor, it's a labor intensive process. To make block is not just, oh, let's make block here. It takes me 50 days to make block. <laughs> so if I start today, you won't have a finished block for 50 days. Yeah, I mean, it's like, that's... 
I mean, I've, I've definitely tried with like a with a car jack and like silicon molds in my chips, and it did not work out very well. Oh man, I would have thought I would have bet money that was Baja. That is brilliant, man. You should definitely be proud of what you're doing, brother. It's incredible. Is this uh, Hubei stabilized over here? It's actually natural. That's what I thought. Yeah. It's, These are the only two trees in natural, and this is a natural tree here out of the Mexico too. And like you were saying, you buy in bulk, and sometimes you just get these. Nat you get a couple pounds out of a thousand pounds. And then, so this is like the this is the Gibside block, and this is one of our best line blocks there. Yeah, I mean, so this stuff here is just phenomenal. This is it's when you want like a super high grade turquoise, but you the high grade turquoise look without the high grade turquoise price. This is where I would. And this, this is the green, and there's a black as well, I believe. I just don't have it with me. This is, um, I was just talking to the folks over at Gibson earlier, because I thought maybe Gibson, I thought this may be their thing. Um, it's so, it's probably the most popular block. Yeah. Sunwest Silver is actually the one that's producing this block. Or Ernie Montoya, right? Uh, Thunderbird or Rio Grande or... Um, his name is Mike Budick. I, I forget his name of his company right now. I was just kind of sitting there. Mike Budick the one that produced all this block. You even see this block in high Native American story. Like, at the, if you go to Santa Fe Indian Market, you'll see the stuff everywhere. I've seen some of this block in like, the most beautiful inlay ever coming out of Gallup. And you're like... As long as they advertise it right, I don't see nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And in a way, even though this is a composite block, it will smoke some real turquoises. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so, how's your turnover? If somebody wanted to mail you 50 pounds tomorrow watching this video, are you back ordered right now? Yeah, I am. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, so normally we're like a 40, it takes a 45 day process, but we're so like filled up that you're probably looking at like 60 days to 90 days is what I would tell someone right now. And I'm not gonna lie, it might be done in 50 days, but I just want to give us that window so we're not. And anybody wanting to get something done right is willing to take the time. Yeah. Why spend all this money on the turquoise chalk to not finish it up right? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Adrian, I can't thank you enough for uh, you taking everybody on that stabilization adventure, man. Because it's a mystery. A lot of people don't even want to talk that much about what you just ta told the people at home. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, no problem. Nice to meet you. In Thailand. Yeah. Thai guy. Yo. It's good to see you. <laughs> you got a great boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That just makes up for what we do. So I, I produce about 150 pounds, which is about four, four or five gallons. So, yeah, so it's, you know, I'm only one play. Serious or not? How many pounds at all? A few, a few pounds a month. Maybe. And then you get over by Kingland. You know, and it's a little more. And they're producing all kinds, but they don't sell. They don't sell in houses. They don't sell. I don't sell. They sell the shit. They don't sell. They don't sell. They got this is what we're doing. I did my own. I know it. You never know. Four dollars a gram. That's a very good price. Probably one of the most famous turquoises. You know, it's one of the three turquoises that people that don't know turquoise know. Kingman, Sleeping Beauty, Royston. Then he gets into Bisbee's and Rancy's and the other high quality Americans. But even though I have a lot of respect for the material, probably one of my least favorite American materials. I just, I like dirty turquoise. 
I like the, the rust and the rind. My cup of tea for sure. Okay, I, I could use one of these. The discovery map? That's cool. Is that a piece of Sonoran Sunrise made its way in? to um, the turquoise bin. <clears throat> you, do you work for, do you work with these gentlemen as well? I beg your pardon, Gary. Do you work with these gentlemen as well? Um, I didn't want to interrupt you because you're, you must stabilize other material that's not turquoise. Yes. So is that how this Sonoran sunrise ended up in here? Well, I mean, if you're, if you're stabilizing other stuff, it's probably chaos. I mean, you try to manage chaos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to pay the bills, man. Absolutely. No, there's nothing wrong. And when it comes to crystal colas, I will take it stabilized any day of the week. Well, you have to. Yeah, 99% of the time, yeah. Absolutely. We do a lot of crisp coal on that. Yeah, it's got too much. We're stable. It doesn't have enough oil. The Brazilian? Peruvian? Peruvian. Yeah, it's really chilly. Yeah. Really, really good. I think that's the only one that I can think of that we do. But I'll find the cross of course. It's like the blue or bold crisp coal. Crisp coal of Arizona, a lot of it. We'll have some people that bring by like wild horse and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I, I, when, I, when it comes to white buffalo, mm -hmm. I will not buy it rough. I'll only buy it stabilized. We do eight to nine of white buffalo. Yeah, and, and, and if you if anybody has a problem with white buffalo being stabilized, you fell into the whole white buffalo trap you to begin you know, with. You don't know what you're doing if you don't have that stuff stabilized. <laughs> it needs, it's, it's, it's too porous. Let me get out of your way. Yeah, that material is too porous for, for you not to. Absolutely. You don't even know how hard it is to get get that as it is. I mean, the good stuff's expensive, and the good stuff got to fit. I think it's overrated in general. <laughs> Since people love it, you know, people like what they like. I love the Odison family. But the, I like every. Yeah. Yeah. Been doing for years. yeah, they they just have so many cooler things, in my opinion. They got a lot of stuff going on. Have you ever seen any of the, the stuff that Tristan's pulling out? The younger man. It looks almost spitting image to. Oh, it looks like a spitting image to the polychrome hubei. Uh, and Denver, I think it was twenty five hundred dollars a pound. <laughs> but, um, is that what Tristan was been pulling out? Yeah, this is young man. Yeah, this stuff, it's pretty expensive rock. This is not Hubi here, huh? No, this is Blackjack right here. Is this Blackjack as well over here, this big piece? Yes. Oh, wow. So this is Hubi here and that's Blackjack there. Yeah. How much um, is this Hubi here? Yeah. Right, I didn't know if it wandered over. No, it's different material here. It's stunning. That's the Blackjack. <laughs> so this is the high grade contest. There's a few different categories, I believe. There's one for the best King's Manasseh. Check out these statues, these awards. Well, statues, well, kind of a statue. Best Bisbee, best Any Mine category, and best number eight. Virgil submitted his big, beautiful piece over here. Shot a shot, but lost to uh, this little beauty. But you know what? You shot your shot, brother. You gotta try. Gotta and, you, try. And, you, and you know what? You participated mm -hmm. in the Turquoise United. I didn't even bring anything. I'm like, oh, I'm not good enough for any of this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. Really? You could have won, bro. No, man. Really? There was you know, really a lot of pictures. The Bisbee. That. Uh, which one won? Do you know? Oh, exactly. the, the one above the paper. Exactly, yeah. Awesome. Uh, somebody made these awards just for the competition, huh? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> this is the best any mine. I wonder what that is, though. I beg your pardon, sir. Do you know what this piece is of the best of any mine? No. It's lovely, though. Which one are you looking at? <laughs> the, That's Red Mountain. Oh, fantastic. I met Randy and his wife at the jog show. 
uh, who used to own and mine Red Mountain. I don't know if they do anymore. But, uh, yeah, find Randy at Jogs. They, um, I don't know if he still owns Red, the Red Mountain Turquoise Mine. Look at that award-winning number eight. A stunning piece. has like the black webbing like that. That's my mom's ring. Yeah, that's, that's that's my favorite is the black. I've seen some of the black that's spitting image of like some really high-end Kingman and stuff. Yeah, it's like a vintage. It's a beautiful ring. cuff. It's really nice. Is that Royston there? It's like Royston. This uh, Candelaria is uh, Jeff Best and Richard Mueller's. Really good friends of mine, the Miners Gallery folks. Mm -hmm. In what kind is this? Candelaria. Everybody's a winner at Turquoise United, Virgil. Right. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a cool spread. Mineralogical differences as a function of color. Turquoise in New Mexico. Uh, I'm not gonna read it for you folks, but feel free to pause the video to read it yourself. And then they have a great spread here. Look at that. Turquoise belongs to a group of five minerals, all with the same structure but different chemistries. X-ray diffraction can help distinguish among the among the Lula. Distinguish among these. Does the mineralogy of turquoise vary with color? Not in this sample. Analysis shows the blue and green areas to be almost identical in both turquoise from the Eureka District in New Mexico. The classic question, is that turquoise? No. Chris Acola from the Johnny Bull Mine. This one, I would have said yeah. This one even got me. It's a phosphate from uh, Oro Grande, district in New Mexico. I would have bet money that that was um, turquoise. Now, ferrocite's also a phosphate. <clears throat> and then there's like phosphosiderite and stuff like that. 
Is that a fair statement? I don't know. I, again, I would have bet money that that was turquoise. Planarite from Cerritos. Now, here's the thing. It's not turquoise, but would Joe Schmo on the street selling at mom and pop venues or even at the Tucson General Mineral Show sell that as turquoise? Probably. Another amazing spread. So hopefully we can scan these. You folks can at home. These QR codes are two different QRs. So I'll zoom in on this one. Hopefully you folks are able to do it. Um, I will click on them and share them. they're not clickable from my filming and this glass being in the way. 43rd New Mexico Mineral Symposium. That's in Socorro, New Mexico. Really cool thing. Um, to my knowledge, they're still taking, you know, you could pay them for a chemical analysis on your materials. Uh, I heard this rumor that if you were a New Mexican resident, the analysis is $50. But I also have heard that they are super backordered. I've been sending people to these folks for 10 years. I believe that, yes, yeah, it's, it's November. Unfortunately, at the same time, we're going to the Hawaii gym show. Maybe I can send a friend over there with a camera to film the symposium. Yes. So cool. Check these out, folks. I had to get these. It's the hand guide. This one was 15. I'm not even going to open it. I should buy another one just to open. <laughs> and I had to get this one. This is 45. Uh, Japanese magazine uh, on turquoise. And it's just awesome. I'm probably never going to read it because I don't want it to get ruined. But maybe one of my favorite buys so far. And then this book here. I've seen this book for a while. $75 on the cover. $45 here. And that might be an old price because it goes for over $100 online. Just really cool book on turquoise. Everywhere from Tibet, beautiful Tibetan turquoise, probably all over Mexico, America, maybe even in Europe. Such mines as like the Egyptian turquoise mines, and that's yeah, not Europe, but the other side of the pond, rather. Stunning book. I'm gonna try to get it signed from the guy who uh, wrote the book. <clears throat> But he's really busy. He was doing the announcing for the um, high grade contest. And I think he has a lot to do with the identification contest. Virgil was so close to winning the Morenci, not Morenci, the uh, Manassa turquoise contest. He unfortunately lost to a much smaller piece, but at least he shot a shot. I'm gonna be doing the ID. Check out this beautiful chunk. Of Royston, 31 pounds. Um, beautiful piece. It would just be a shame to cut it up, but you know I would. And you know Sweet Jim would. If you folks haven't seen our Two Sisters um, Rockyard video, check that out. We were buying Royston for $1 a pound. Um, many of which just had a single vein just like this going through it, but for a dollar a pound, we had to buy it all. And the lady actually came out and gave us a giant slab of pure vein after buying it. Uh, yeah, I think Miss Sandy Carter has all of that Royston. Beautiful stuff. Nice thick vein. Put my hand up to it so you can see how big it is. I would cut it. 
<laughs> for sure. So we are here with Michaela and Kyle of Silver Fox Nevada Turquoise. Uh, relatively new turquoise to the industry. Make sure to check them out on Instagram and their up and coming YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, shop with them online, silverfoxturquoise.com. Michaela and Kyle, how are you doing? Doing great. great. How are you? Is this your first turquoise united? It is. Yes, it is. Where are you folks from? Oh, well, Nevada. <laughs> We're from Nevada. <laughs> Not a hot for it. Must be exciting and nerve wracking. Yes. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, play with the big boys. Oh yeah. Well, your product is amazing. Thank you. It, it looks absolutely stunning. How long have you been uh, in the turquoise scene? About two years now. Mine is just under two years old. It's a new discovery. Yeah. Not just a new discovery. Not just a new mine to you. New to the world. New to, new to the, the world. world. That's yes. stunning. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Oh, that's exciting. Yes. And um, are you folks doing your own mining? Are you subcontracting the mining? Or We are the mine owner, operators, processors, and cutters. So wow. we are direct sales from the ground. Mine to table. Yes, <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> and um, what made you want to get into turquoise? Uh, just like rocks. Uh, we just happened upon the deposit while crystal hunting. And so we decided to uh, give it a whirl and see what we could do with it. Here we are. When you also live in Nevada. Yeah. Yes. It's turquoise is, is the bee's knees. It is. It's, <laughs> it is. it's out there. It's fun to find when you find it. And yeah, we're, we're pretty proud of our, our discovery and what we can bring to the world. So taking a look here, brilliant blues. Um, is it a, it, does it produce a lot of material? It does. I would say yes for the yes. volume of material that is new. It's uh, all done by hand, picks, shovels, rock hammers, whatever we can get into the ground to extract it. It's moved from the out in little uh, 20 pound bags of rock and we sort it and pick out the best ones for getting cut. And we're finding that we're mostly have a nugget going That's awesome. Is it? Oh, you brought some. We do. What? The secret stash. Holy smokes. <laughs> Look how glassy these are. I, I'm assuming. Are they, they're not stabilized? No, so it's all natural. Oh, wow. backing on the cabs, but other than that, it's all natural. Um, yeah, you're backing on this piece, it looked a little bit darker. Is it DevCon or is it a different product? It's a uh, clear, uh, clear backing. So for example, this piece right here, it does have a backing, it's clear. Do you mind? Absolutely. Okay. Whoa, that's great. So then you get all the natural play if you're using an open um, backed. It does. And also it gives you its transparency to see how much of the stone you're actually getting. So you know you're not just buying backing wood over here. You can kind of, just like much like a diamond, you want to look through the backside and kind of see what you're working with. It's what, what our theory was behind using it. That's brilliant. I haven't seen anybody do that before. Yes. <laughs> as far as I know, we're the only ones that are doing it. So it's also an identifier for our stones later on. Mm -hmm. Someone gets hold of stone and doesn't know how to identify it, the clear backing can be one of our identifiers. So that piece must have came from quite a big nugget. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you just started the mine, started working the mine. Are you already putting aside a private collection or is everything self to pay the bills, to get it moving? I get first rider refusal. So after yes. we cut, <laughs> I take all the goodies and I have a little stash to myself and then bring, it's hard to choose because all of it is so beautiful, but then I bring the rest of the beautiful things to you guys. But yeah, I definitely have my own collection because I work really, we work really hard to go get it. I promise to goodness you will regret it when you retire if you don't do it yes. as soon as you start. Right. And it's hard because you're like, man, that's definitely five thousand dollar piece right there, and you're yes. like, but no, it's for the shelf. Yeah, it's right. for the safe. It's our for first pieces that we pulled out. I decided to make jewelry, have jewelry made of all of our first, and then including this pendant. So these are all of our first nuggets that we pulled out of the claim. Those are amazing. So then they're kind of set in a way that honors them, and I can still wear them, but they are the first guys out. Oh, what a blessing! Yeah. And it stays with Mama. Yeah. Um. So. There are some polychrome pieces. There are. Yes. yes. But is it, in general, mostly blue? Yes. I'm assuming you either brought the best pieces or everything. This is about everything yeah, and the best. The best of everything that we have that's cut. Well, that means this is the quality you can expect yes. from everything. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's great. Yeah. Yes. Um, because, you know, unfortunately, there are some big mines 
One of them is the um, Royston, which I'm starting to see stabilized Royston. I saw it for the first time in Denver last year. Blew my mind. Because for years, it's like, oh, you can expect that to be... And they did it really nicely. You know, you would expect it to be natural. And it's going to be natural, and then someone's going to get it. And then their ethics, the ethics is going to fall along the way. It's so cool to see just a table full of the best things you have, which is all the things you have, and it's rock hard natural. Some of these are so hard that they're not even back, some of these cabs. Um, are you selling anything from this particular tray here? Is this kind of just an example? It's kind of an example of uh, what, what the nuggets can actually look like when polished up, what some of the material looks like when it's not back. But this is some of the highest grade material here as far as our gem grade material goes. It is amazing. And so if you don't mind me asking, get into your trade secrets here. Your final polish for the nuggets, are you using a compound with a buffing wheel to get into those? Are you doing it by hand with a flex shaft? So actually, these guys right here have been in a rock tunnel. Oh, fantastic. You basically work them down, get the, uh, the crust off them, if you will. And then, yeah, it goes on. not enough to break up their natural texture. Yeah, so you still get the natural look, like Michaela says. And then, yeah, it just goes on to uh, the final polish is using Zam. Fantastic. So from the tumbler to Zam, you're not afraid of Zam. Some people either love it or you hate it. I think, so the problem with Zam, in my opinion, is you can get like these polished scratches. Like you'll just, it'll look like 280 grit or 220 grit and they're polished. And you even see that on the plaza in Santa Fe and some of these big name jewelry. Zam can make a pad stone look better. Yeah. Um, I don't see any of that with your pieces. Are you going to only 3,000 grit before you jump to Zam on your cabochons, or are you going a little bit higher? Uh, I think it is about 3,000 is what it drops off. And then we go to the Zam on it. Yeah, it, it puts a killer finish on it. And most of the material just squeals. It's really hard. So uh, that's really it's a, it's, squeal. Yeah. It's, it's scary because the wheels are expensive, but that's what you want to hear. It's worth yeah. it. You want to hear them suffer. Yeah, it's earplugs on that 80 grit wheel on a lot of the material just because it is so hard. Really unique material. So there's a few that almost like this one and this one. They have like their own look. Do you think eventually, when you when you start pulling out more looks, you'll give individual names to the different looks? I don't know if we've gotten that far. It has been. Like idea. Yeah, we like the. It's important. It's important. I think. Yeah. Like I mean, Kingman does it big time. They're kind of the ones that name their different looks from the same minds. Uh -huh. um, number eight. There's a little bit like they call it, like there's the eggshell. Okay. And then they have a name for the ones yeah. that are a lot darker blue. But the only thing we, I, you know, we've got so far is we call it our gumdrop cut. Because we, we keep a really high dome to maintain all of the turquoise material we can, as far as being nuggets. So they're really high domed cabochons. And this and is one of our favorite little guys. all the way through the back. Of oh wow, yeah. that is just stunning. It's so rich. The stuff like this, this is the only piece we've had that has this type of pattern on it. And uh, we get a lot of uh, kind of one-hit wonders that will come out. And you'll get an amazing piece like it and you won't see another piece like it. Just unicorns. Yeah, a lot, yeah. A lot of unicorns. <laughs> amazing. Um, did you learn to cut on turquoise? Pretty much, yeah. That's impressive. I've only been cutting. Yeah, I and also scary. It is, yeah. <laughs> I'm a new cutter. I've only been cutting now for probably off and on for about the last year, year and a half or so. Oh, wow. Years. Yeah. But you had like some experience before that, some basic like foundational knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then, so he knew he was confident going on that wheel. And then how he to, just kind of hones in there. Like how to look for the scratches, different compounds or paste or pads for different types of materials. Cerium on agates, uh, yeah. aluminum oxide on jade, yeah. Zam, Fabuluster. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, I had a, I have an old article where people were using tin on canvas. Oh, really? Like from the 50s. And now it's kind of obsolete. We, I'm a Zam guy. Some yeah. people hate it. You either hate it or you love it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I like the finish it gives on the turquoise. It takes to it really well. The proof is in the pudding. Look at these. Absolutely. If you want, we can open up these cases for you to take out. I would love to see those. Yeah, they say if you kind of roll them together in your hand, they make they have that uh, glassy sound to them. That's my favorite. 
even through the camera, you can hear the difference between the thud of plastic yes. and the chime singing sound of highly silicated stone. Absolutely. This is, that's, these are such great pieces. Look at those. So I was just asking you about pyrite, if there was any, if you've ever found any pieces with any pyrite in it, and you were saying, um, not yet? Yeah, but no, no pyrite yet, but our deposit is what's called the oxide zone, so basically Mother Nature through time has leached all the sulfide out of the iron pyrite that was in the deposit, it leaves the iron behind, and basically when we get into that and actually start cutting it, you can actually smell the metal that's been left behind and all that iron and such. So that is a trip. It's a lot of fun. Kind of turns all the water brown, but uh, it makes your beautiful matrix and webbing when it does that from here. Absolutely. Yeah, we're uh, probably one of the newest mines on the market. Been in operation for just under two years. Yeah, we'll mine direct with our operators. So if you folks look, every single piece, perfect bezel. Why perfect bezel? Why take the time? Because these are intended for jewelry. A lot of people don't really think about that. They're just mindlessly polishing. Every single one, perfect girdle, about 11 degrees. Yeah, they're all individually priced. Because these are, they're cutting them. You could collect them just have them but they are cut for jewelry that's the difference between a good cabochon and a great cabochon so you guys are saying the green color is pretty rare? Yeah. 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 We still have it, but we got much more rare. Yeah. It doesn't come along very often. It's a silver fox. Great name, by the way. Thank you. Names are so important. Yes. Yes. We were, he's uh, friends with the Manasseh folks here. We were talking about what it used to be called. Uh -huh. It was it like, it was a lick skillet or lick something. Skillet mine. And it's cute, very old timey. Yeah. But <laughs> not, nothing, not like, not as cool as Silver Fox. Thank you. And that's his namesake, Kyle named it. Yeah. So. Oh, the deal is like the next it. one is mine. I named the next one, right? That's right. <laughs> I have a crippling guitar addiction, so I sell off my collections all the time to fund my addiction. Right. I've one, seen you have a few sell one to fund the other. I almost feel bad taking this one because it's such a great example of the polychrome. Well, there's been a lot of people looking at it. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of people picking up the hand, they hand, they hand, they hand. <laughs> Snooze, you lose. Probably be back for this sweetheart as well. Okay. But I just got here. <laughs> yeah, have a look. So folks, uh, there's the QR code. You can scan the QR code through the computer screen. Check out Silver Fox Turquoise. So as of right now, you're still getting, um, you're breaking into the scene. No rough for sale. You're Right, I mean, if you're mining, cutting, doing the jewelry, driving yourself to your own shows you know it's it is so much easier to do this than to go and high grade your material figure out what you want to keep what should go out and some people might not quite understand that but for instance manasseh does not sell rough um what happens when you sell rough people cut bad cuts and it's, it's if you look at all the manasseh stuff the cuts are flawless people start 
doing goofy things to your material. And I'm sure you will when you get the inventory to have A, B, C, D grades and yes. stuff. But right now, two years in, I do respect that you're not putting out rough. Yeah. And right now, we don't want to compete against ourselves by handing out rough exactly. to other folks to cut. I mean, to, to, to do any kind of service to selling rough, you got to at least leave, leave them enough money to make twice as much. And then you are working against yourself. You know, if yes. somebody... And um, it depends on their clientele. Maybe they make you look bad by charging 20 times what you're charging. Exactly. To where they're like, okay, nobody can afford that. This is an overpriced material. So I, there's so many variables why there's not to lot. sell rough. Yeah. But I cannot wait. I will bug you every year until you do. Fair enough. <laughs> um, Michaela and Kyle. Kyle. You folks are stunning. You guys are going to kill it. Thank you. Any other shows coming up? Uh, this is it right now. Um, you guys need to poke your head into another vendor space in Tucson. Another turquoise. If you're friends with anybody in the scene, don't spend ten grand for a booth. Just I say, hey, can we can we show? Can we have a dem, you know presentation on a good weekend? Yeah, we're small, we're compact. Um, if you ever need help finding those people, I got your back. I know a lot of people who would love for you to just to show. Oh, perfect. It's expensive enough just getting a hotel exactly. over there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you guys need a break in there. The same thing with Denver. You guys gotta go. Sh should show your face if you can, but you're busy cutting, mining, yes, <laughs> making oh, yeah. jewelry, driving yourself around, probably attempting to live a normal human life, yes. like eating food and sleeping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. All right. So, turquoise identification contest. I just did it. There was 30 different pieces, $5 to enter. The winner wins $500. The announcer will be, excuse me, the winner will be announced tomorrow at the dinner thing. And they'll call the person who won if they're not there. 30 pieces, they could be duplicates. And I'm sure one of them was a synth. But it was a lot of fun. It took me about 25 minutes to pick out what I thought was what. Not feeling very confident. <laughs> uh, there was some that was just a shot in the dark. One in particular, uh, if anybody comes, I think it's number 10. Completely got me. 10 and... 25 just wrecked the floor with me it's so much fun if you guys come the next couple days or I guess it's tomorrow right you have until tomorrow come do it uh, I'm not going to spoil it by going or even asking to go look at it because it's if somebody sees the video before it comes out it's not fair that they get extra time uh, some were way easier than others but definitely a lot of fun or that $500 and the name in the Turquoise Museum. A lot of fun. All right, we're here checking out the Miners Gallery. Our very good friends, Richard and Jeff Best. Uh, they're always getting more and more stuff. Definitely the most cutting material here. Uh, and I would probably say the most cabochons here too, huh? I think so. You got, you got a few. <laughs> Check this out. This is a Candelaria. You entered the competition but didn't win. Maybe next year. I'm not worried about it. I just entered the um, identification contest and I'm, I'm not gonna win. No way, Jose. <laughs> That'd be like saying, identify these cabochons, where'd they come from? <laughs> yeah, right. You can't. Where's this from? I have no idea. You see? You might have not have done any better than me over there. That's probably right. <laughs> but it's beautiful. See that guy over there, Mark over there? I said, hey, this is Bisbee. Look at that. Ooh, sweet. Sorry. It's your Chinese red skin. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is super cool. Is this Chinese? Yes. Very cool. Yes. 
Someone might think it's a shame to cut up, but I would chop this thing up. <laughs> It's pretty. Yeah. Nice. That's a beautiful piece of Bisbee. Yeah. Well, what people are looking for is this. Now, if they slab that, it's an inside. What are you selling for? Is it my cab? Is it cabs? In other words, could you get, you know, inside there? That's what you're looking at. Is it, if they, you know, what are they selling? What are they buying it for? For cabochons? By the carrot? Okay, they're asking almost $100 a carrot. Oh, yeah. That's what oh, yeah. Good for people like you, though. Yeah. Huh? Good for you. Well, well maybe yeah. not even if you're buying out collections and stuff. That's a nice thick fan. Thank this you. is for you. Thank you. For your wife. And then, you know, when you go back home, you should say, okay, this is for you from out here. here. <laughs> Yeah, the Manchon Redskin definitely is the poor man's Bisbee, huh? <laughs> well, not that one, but you know, there are oh, so, some, yeah, some, some are, more, more, a little bit more. Some are Ooh. better than others. They always have a nice variety, and usually one of two prices, either $16 an ounce or $18 an ounce. Easter Blue, that, to my knowledge, is a... Uh, Audison mine. There's a Mason Pass. I wonder where that's from. Definitely almost looks like Royston, except the Matrix is different. Oh, turquoise. There's a different variety of red skin, I think. This is what's labeled. Doesn't look anything like it, though. Can't be. It's got to be something different. Well, my wife bought. I don't know what you want. She said, "I'm really sorry you brought me here." Here's a miscellaneous. I love picking through the miscellaneous bin. That's super dark green Chinese there. Some of the stuff in the miscellaneous is rock hard natural. Like that is a stunning web piece there. Um, yeah, maybe just throw the bend there and throw it all in here. I'd like to have Ernie come over here and look at these rocks. That's fine. Never met him. Even a little piece of sujolite in there. Some Hubei. Some number eight. Stuff is really cool. Can look like nothing's there sometimes. These rough baby backed cabochons. It's rich blue. Never even heard of it. That's not even labeled. Here's some more Amaru, Amar Amaru, Australian. Tell me that just doesn't look like number eight.
Quite a bit of Amaru. Here's some Blue Moon. Pieces of Monchon. <laughs> some green Chinese. Uh, looks Mexican to me. Pretty hard. This doesn't look very Mexican to me. Here's some Mexican. That's good stuff. That looks like Kingman. Nuggies, some process number eight, and then lots of beads. Take a look at Richard and Mr. Best's finished products. A lot of these come from collections. Um, different folks. If you folks are in Tucson, they're at the Kino show. Uh, a lot of the turquoise that I cut comes rough from the Miner's Gallery. Look at the prices on some of this stuff. Absolutely nuts. This, you could easily get two, three dollars a carat for. 30 cents? It's like almost not even worth cutting. It's so affordable. But again, because these come from old collections that Mr. Best and Mr. Mueller get, um, the price to move. A lot of these, you know exactly where they come from. A lot of them would be speculation and they don't do that kind of stuff. So can't always tell you exactly where they're from. They can give their opinion on what it kind of looks like. But a lot of great stuff. Dollar a carat for that. That's probably like 30 bucks. That beautiful green piece. These chocolatey pieces. Yeah. 
that happen. I did his gig about 10 years ago. He's an incredibly nice guy. Spent an hour going through all my stuff with me. And it was $75. It was a steal. I heard that family really didn't like that because he was just giving away a lot of good turquoise. But now they doubled the price for half the time. $150 yeah. and then like for two hours a yeah. very oh, different types of stuff. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. I think probably one of his kids. <laughs> Thank you. Two dollars a carrot, that one piece there is probably fifty cents. <laughs> it's so affordable. That piece right there is pretty spectacular. It's impulsive. It's not like, uh, what do you have when you're not to change something? What do you have there? Like these, these caps here are ricing too. And they're natural, natural. That's rocks. Mr. Best, what is your favorite piece here at your booth? Uh, well, my favorite for the moment is this one. Is, uh, I cut this out uh, a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I really was really pleased with this. Look at that match. Look at this. Uh, do you feel this thing? It's, feel it. so, it's, it's perfect. Feel so nice. Oh. Feel, uh, and a nice sharp edge and it's hard and pretty. In um <clears throat> so this is Australian, how would you pronounce it? It's Amaru? Amaru, uh -huh. How long have you been seeing uh turquoise come from Australia? In uh, your in your experience? Uh, For me like three years maybe. Yeah, that's about right, yeah. Uh -huh. So not you, unheard of in the eighties and nineties maybe? The, well I have talked to other dealers that uh, said that uh, there were some of them came in the early nineties. Hmm. It came over and they were selling it was actually number eight because it's so simple. Oh, absolutely. And you have a little bit of some stuff that does look like number eight. This isn't an exceptional example. But over here, that actually looks a little bit better than number eight, but I do see some stuff online. This is all I'm real here. Like this to the untrained eye. You could probably see number eight vibes in that. Number eight, sure. It looks just like right, number eight. Yep. Yeah. Very cool that you got so much of it. 
Ah, oh, this is a good quality one right there. Yeah. <laughs> that is incredible. Yep. Here, where's the spray bottle? Look at that. That is so rich. And your prices are always fantastic. $18 an ounce, a pound or more only $16 an ounce. Mm -hmm. Have you had the pleasure of cutting? Well, you cut that piece back yeah, there, right? Yeah, cut that, yeah. Uh, cut some slabs of it. Uh, here's more of it, just... Oh, that's different. A little bit different. The Matrix is, is uh, way different. It almost looks like a clay. Uh -huh. That is great. Yeah, it's good. This one is really unique as well. Lovely material. It's pretty, yeah. It's nice stuff. Oh, that was a piece of the natural. Right <laughs> Are these? Oh, I thought those were all little cabochons. I'm like, oh boy, that was a lot of work. Oh, oh, <laughs> just to see them again. I've got, I've got cabochons and bags like that. And the real cabochons. <laughs> oh my. Uh, yeah. Bag That's bag. some work. Yeah, bag. Oh. Dry clay. You you cut, you know what it's about. You know, people ask me, well, why is this little piece expensive? Why is this big piece a certain price? I said, look, I can cut a piece the size of a quarter at the same time that it takes me to cut the, the piece of the size of a pencil end. Absolutely. And they it go, might take you longer for the pencil yeah, end. Right. <laughs> they, don't, they don't understand. Well, there's not much circular. I know, but it's a lot of work. For anybody. Uh-huh. And until they have these robots cabin those things out and they're not there yet, uh -huh. <laughs> you're not going to stand a chance. <laughs> that is so incredible. You have a lot of different stuff that I feel like you didn't have um, in Tucson last year. Is this new? No. I don't remember. That's not in the way. Um, I beg your pardon? Well, we may, I don't know, we may, I think we had that. We had that at uh, Kino this fall, uh, this last. This was this year. Because yeah. I remember you used to have like round tumbles of Sleeping Beauty, yeah. which were cool, but these are awesome. Yeah. Totally ready to be backed, right. ready to be worked. Yep. $30 an ounce. Mm -hmm. Jeez Louise. Do you mind if I wet this one? Look at that color explosion. Yep. Ooh. Will you be at the San Diego show? Um, well, uh, you mean the San Diego Retirement Mineral Show? Mm -hmm. uh, You've done it in the past, I believe. Uh, well, we've, we've done uh, Vista and we did uh, the El Cajon Show. Are you doing Buena Vista this year? Uh, Next weekend? Or tomorrow? No, <laughs> no. Wait, because you're here. No. Sorry, it's this weekend. No. But you'll, what about Denver? Do you do Denver? No, no. But uh, they, you can bet your bottom dollar you'll be at Kino. Uh, Oh, yeah. Sport, sure. Electric sports oh, complex. Oh, 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 okay. Look at that. That's a good one. I would do my best to keep that grind as shallow as possible to try to keep some of those colors. Oh, sure. Yeah, back in, uh... You could probably just zam it straight from here. It's pretty hard stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you call your turquoise sand? I call it kitty litter. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> I really haven't had a name for it. <laughs> Uh, Sand is good. Somebody had another name for it over there. Yeah. But I always like the kitty litter. Twelve dollars an ounce. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out, folks. Let's take a piece of this number eight over here and show you how similar this stuff looks. <laughs> if somebody laid this over here, it could probably go unnoticed for quite a while. Mr. Best or Richard could definitely tell. But um. Very similar, especially. Now, can you tell it all? <laughs> this is a little bit lighter when it's not wet. Phosphates are weird. So cool. Jeff, I don't know if I asked you last time we were chatting, do you have a private collection at home? So there's two types of people. There's people who, it's their job, everything's for sale. 
And there's the people who have a collection at home. I personally don't have a collection. I sell off my collection. I get a collection and then I sell it. Well, <laughs> what I have, yeah, I've got a few pieces that are kind of special, but what I have is I've got a little box I call my, my super stores. And when I've cut cabs, I've got a little box of cabs that I've saved out every once in a while. When I'm cutting a cab, I'll say, I'm not going to sell that one. Fantastic. And that goes into my super cab box. <laughs> nice. i got to see it someday. you got to send me a picture when you get home, baby. <laughs> So this is something I see in number eight that I don't see in the Amaru. Is this darker stuff sometimes? Yeah, darker maple gel. And that, that's unusual with the uh, number eight. I don't see much of it. Every once in a while, uh, I, when I'm going through the uh, rough before I stabilize it, I see that dark matrix. <laughs> So Virgil just got a super sweet Tyrone necklace. How much was it? 50 bucks. That's really good. New Mexico turquoise. The owner of the mine's right over there. <laughs> That's the guy who owns it. I bought um, Bovia Cora turquoise. Really cool. That's the owner of the mine. Looks a lot like Kingman. Hopefully. Uh, got a pound from our good friend Michael Torino. Michael. Okay. Toronto. And he uh, threw in a bunch extra in the bag. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. That was fun, brother. Cool. Did you have fun? Yes, sir. <laughs> Did you spend too much money? Never. Never. <laughs> All right. That was the Turquoise United Show.